Hello, dear students. I am very happy to welcome you to our Department of General Hygiene of the Institute of Public Health of Sechenov University. The head of the Department of General Hygiene is Professor Oleg Mitrohin. I am Associate Professor of the Department of General Hygiene, Tatiana Hadekina. Today, I will give you a lecture on hygiene. So let's begin. Hygiene is a medical science. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. The purpose of medicine is to restore, to preserve, to promote the health, the health of people. This is achieved in two ways. The first, treatment of sick people, and the second is the prevention of disease and premature aging of the body. So the, the main purpose of medicine is to restore, to preserve, to promote the health of people. And this is achieved by two ways. The first, treatment of sick people. And the second, the prevention of disease and uh, giving uh, the health to the body. Uh, do you hear me? Answer, please. Yes? The two lines... Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. I see. Thank you. The two lines were formed in medicine, therapeutic and prophylactic. Therapy is the answer of the therapeutic areas. Hygiene is the ancestor of preventive areas. Therefore, therapeutic and prophylactic there are two lines formed in medicine. Uh, we uh, speak about prophylactic. Hygiene. What is hygiene? The name hygiene uh, came from the name of the ancient Greek goddess of health, Hygieia, the daughter of the ancient Greek god of healing, Asclepius. This is ancient Roman statue, goddess of health, Hygieia the daughter of the god of healing Asclepius. Here she is. More than 2,000 years ago, Hippocrates and other thinkers expressed the idea that environmental factors can influence the occurrence of diseases. This is Hippocrates. What is the meaning of the word hygiene? Hygiene is a science that studies the influence of various environmental factors on the human body and develops measures to maintain health. So hygiene is a science that studies the influence on various environmental factors on the whole human body and develops measures to maintain health. The great Russian doctor Nikolai Ivanovich Pirogov said, I believe in hygiene. This is where the true progress of our science lies. The future belongs to preventative medicine. This science will bring undoubted benefit to mankind. This is the greatest Russian doctor, Pirogov, who said that the future belongs to preventive medicine. One of the founders of scientific hygiene and public medicine was Fyodor Fyodor <laughs> Mom. He said, the development of the sanitary direction in medicine is extremely important. The doctor must not go what, uh, Any questions? No. Uh, Fyodor Mann was the, one of the founders of scientific hygiene and public medicine. He said, the development of the sanitary direction in medicine is extremely important. The doctor must not only treat patients, but also prevent diseases. And that in fact, this is the ideal side of his calling, the best and the most useful side of his practice. This is Fyodor Fyodorovich. Mm. Oh. Scientific hygiene and public medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ah. Somebody is speaking. Ah. I hear you. Do you want to ask something or not? 
Hygiene is a medical science that studies the influence of er environmental factors on the human body in order to optimize beneficial and prevent adverse effects. As a result, hygiene has two objects of study, environmental factors and the reaction of the body, and uses the knowledge and methods of physics, chemistry, biology, geography, and other sciences that study the environment, as well as physiology, anatomy, and pathological physiology. So, hygiene has two subjects to su study, environmental factors, and the reaction of the body and uses many uh, knowledges and methods of other sciences such as physics, chemistry, biology, geography and other sciences. And we must know physiology, anatomy and pathological physiology also. Environmental factors are diverse and are divided into biological factors, microorganisms, parasites, insects, antibiotics, and other biosubstrates. Physical factors, such as noise, vibration, electromagnetic and radioactive radiation, climate, and so on. Chemical factors, chemical elements and their compounds. Uh, factors of human activity, the, the regime of uh, the day, the severity and the intensity of work, and so on. Social factors. Social elements of human activities are labor, lifestyle, and socioeconomic structure of the society. So, the environmental fa factors are following biological, physical, chemical, the factors of human activity and social. This is, uh, these are factors that uh, we uh, distinguish. Uh, the applied section of uh, hygiene aimed at development, developing measures for optimization and prevention is called sanitation. Hygiene should be distinguished from the term sanitary. Sanitary is a set of practical measures aimed at implementing the science, developed hygienic standards, health regulations and recommendations. Sanitary is compliance and control of requirements. The proofs of their necessity are developed by hygiene. The subject of hygiene study is influence of the environment on human health. The objects of this science are a human and the external environment. So once more, the subject of hygiene study is influence, influence of environment on human health. The objects of this science are a human and the external environment. What is environment? What is it? Environment is a system of interconnected factors and phenomena in which work and life are take place. Consequently, the environment is social and natural factors. The natural elements are air, water, food, soil, radiation, plant and animal. These are natural factors. Social elements of human activities are labor, lifestyle and social economic structure of the society. These are social elements, labor, lifestyle and social economical structure of the society. In the framework of hygiene, the following main section, sections are distinguished. They are general hygiene, social hygiene, communal hygiene, occupational health, food hygiene, radiation hygiene, hygiene of children and adolescents, military hygiene, naval hygiene, hygiene of railway transport, air hygiene, hygiene of physical culture and sports, 
health toxicology, sanitary microbiology, and others. Once more, what are the themes of hygiene? General hygiene, social hygiene, communal hygiene, occupational health, food hygiene, radiation hygiene, hygiene of children and endocellants, military hygiene, naval hygiene, hygiene of railway transport, air hygiene, hygiene of physical culture and sports, health toxicology and sanitary microbiology and others. What is environmental hygiene? Environmental hygiene is studying the effects of natural factors, atmospheric air, solar radiation and others. Food hygiene, studying the importance and impact of food, developing measures to optimize and ensure food safety. Often this section is confused with nutrition. So food hygiene is the science which studies the importance and impact of food, developing measures to optimize and ensure food safety. Often this section is confused with nutrition. This is food hygiene. Uh, occupational health. What is occupational health? It is a science that studies the effects of the work environment and factors of the production process on humans. Uh, study the effects of the work environment. Occupational health. Community hygiene. Community hygiene in the framework of which requirements are developed for urban planning, housing, water supply, and so on. Uh, this, uh, this is science about our uh, houses, about our flats, and so on. Community hygiene, uh, in the framework of which requirements and are developed for urban planning, housing, water supply, and others. Hygiene of children and the dustlands studies uh, our children, studying the complex effect of factors on a growing organism. This is science about children and dustlands. Hospital hygiene. Hospital hygiene is a section of hygiene that studies the impact of factors related to the conditions on, of stay of patients in medical institutions and develops norms and requirements that ensure the exclusion of the adverse effects of these factors. So uh, this uh, uh, science about hospitals. Hospital hygiene is a section of hygiene that studies the impact of factors related to the conditions of stay of patients in medical institutions and develops norms and requirements that ensure the exclusion of the adverse effects of these factors. Personal hygiene. Personal hygiene is a set of hygiene rules, the implementation which contributes to the preservation and strengthening of the health. This is personal hygiene. What are the main tasks of hygiene? Well, the first task is to study of the influence of the environment on the state of health and health of people. In this case, the external environment should be understood as the whole complex of set, set of natural, social, domestic, industrial, and other factors. So the first task is study of the influence of the environment on the state of health and health of people. The second task is scientific substantiation and development of hygienic standards, rules, and measures to improve the environment and eliminate harmful factors. This was the second uh, task of hygiene. The third task of hygiene is 
scientific substantiation and development of hygienic standards, rules and measures to increase the body's resistance to possible harmful environmental influences in order to improve health and physical development, increase efficiency. So the third task of hygiene is scientific substantiation and development of hygienic standards, rules and measures to increase the body's resistance to possible harmful environmental influences in order to improve health and physical development, increase efficiency. This is facilitated by rational nutrition, physical exercise, hardening, a properly organized regime of work and rest, compliance with personal hygiene rules. So we must um, know about rational nutrition, about physical exercises, about uh, hardening and, and so on. And we must properly organize regime of work and our rest. As we have said, environmental factors are physical, chemical, biological, lifestyle, and conditions of work. So we begin to discuss physical factors. What physical factors we know? They are microclimate, illumination, noise, vibration, infrasound, ultrasound, non-ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation uh, have, is divided in, in, into electromagnetic fields, magnetic fields, static electric fields and laser radiation. So physical factors are microclimate, illumination, noise, vibration, infrasound, ultrasound, non-ionizing radiation, and ionizing radiation. At first, we begin with microclimate. What is microclimate? Clim microclimate is climatic conditions created in a limited space artificially or due to natural features. The indoor micro microclimate is created artificially in order to provide the most favorable conditions for people and protect them from adverse climatic effects. So microclimate characterizes the, the most favorable conditions for people. And uh, we have to know microclimate. The main parameters of the microclimate are following air temperature, surface temperature, relative humidity, air speed, and intensity of thermal radiation. So the main pyramid, parameters of the microclimate are air temperature, surface temperature, relative humidity, air speed, intensity of thermal radiation. Human activity is, is accompanied by the continuous release of heat into the environment. Its amount depends on the degree of physical stress, energy consumption, in certain climatic conditions at, and ranges from 50 watts at rest to 500 watts during the hard work. Temperature, humidity, airflow rate, infrared radiation in the room can significantly affect the human body. All these factors affect the human body and affect our health. The human body gives off or perceives thermal energy through convection, radiation, thermal conductivity or conduction, and evaporation. The transfer of heat with each of them always goes in one direction, from a warmer body to a less warmed one. So we have uh, processes of convection, radiation, th thermal, uh, thermal uh, conductivity or conduction, and evaporation. 
The phenomenon of energy transfer from a warmer part of the body to a less heated one, or from a warmer body to a less heated one through direct contact or intermediate body, uh, body is called thermal conductivity. So we know about thermal conductivity. What is convection? Convection is a heat transfer process in which energy is transported by jets of liquid or gas. Convection in Latin means mixing. Convection is absent in solids and does not occur in vacuum. So remember please that convection does not occur in vacuum. Radiation. Radiation is the process of transferring energy from one body to another using electromagnetic waves. Radiation differs from convection and heat conduction in that it does not require direct contact during heat transfer and radiation heat transfer can be carried out even in full vacuum. You see, radiation may be in full vacuum, but convection does not occur in vacuum. In everyday life, human heat transfer often occurs as a result of convection and radiation. However, conduction also occurs when a person directly contacts the surface of the body with objects, equipment and other things. The above methods of transferring thermal energy provide heat transfer between the body and the environment. So in everyday life, we have convection, radiation and conduction also. In this case, excess heat is transferred to the environment by following ways through the respiratory system, about 5%, radiation, 40%, convection, 30%, evaporation, 20%. When heating food and water in the digestive tract, up to 5%. So remember please, that evaporation is not main uh, way of uh, 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 the heating. We have radiation 40%, convection 30% and evaporation only 20%. <laughs> in order for physiological processes in the body to proceed normally, the heat released by the body must be completely removed to the environment. Imbalance in the heat balance can lead to overheating or to overcooling of the body and as a result to disability, tiredness, loss of cons consciousness and heat death. So overheating and overcooling are both bad for our organism. Human tolerance to temperature and its thermal sensations are largely dependent on humidity and air velocity. Now we speak about humidity and air velocity. The greater the relative humidity, the less sweat evaporates per unit time and the faster the body overheats. What is absolute humidity? Absolute humidity is a physical quantity of showing the mass of water vapor contained in one cubic meter of air. Absolutus, full. So, absolute humidity is a physical quantity showing the mass of water, how many water, how much water is uh, contained in one cubic meter of air. Maximum humidity. Maximum humidity characterized by the maximum amount of moisture that can be in the air at a certain temperature is the maximum amount of moisture in, uh, in the certain time, in the certain temperature. Also in uh, one cubic meter of air. The moisture capacity of air increases sharply with increasing temperature. The ratio of the absolute humidity at a given temperature to its moisture capacity at the same time temperature is called the relative humidity. 
So uh, the ratio of the absolute humidity at a given temperature to its moist, moisture capacity at the same temperature is called the relative humidity. Relative humidity shows how many percent of the maximum possible humidity is actually in the air. We can calculate relative humidity. Relative humidity is absolute humidity divided to maximum humidity. And relative humidity is usually expressed as a percentage. We express relative humidity in percents. Saturation deficiency. This is difference in maximum and absolute humidity. Uh, it is named saturation deficiency. Physiological deficiency of saturation. The difference between the maximum humidity at a person's body temperature, 37 degrees, or skin temperature, 32 degrees, and the absolute humidity at the same time of observation. So we uh, know about saturation deficiency. This is difference in maximum and absolute humidity. And physiological deficiency of saturation, the difference between the maximum humidity at person's body temperature, 37 degrees, or skin temperature, 32 degrees, and the absolute humidity at the same time and at the same temperature of air. Dew point, what is dew point? Dew point temperature is the temperature at which dew begins to form. It is temperature to which it is necessary to cool the air so that the relative humidity reaches 100%. Dew point is a certain conditions, temperature and humidity, under which water vapor contained in air passes from a gaseous state to a liquid one. This is named dew point. When we have smoke. The lower the humidity in the room, the dew point below the actual indoor temperature. The higher the humidity in the room, the higher the dew point and closer to the actual indoor temperature. If the relative humidity is 100%, then the dew point coincides with the actual indoor temperature. So once more, please, the lower the humidity in the room, the dew point below the actual indoor temperature. The higher the humidity in the room, the higher the dew point and closer to the actual indoor temperature. And if the, the relative humidity is 100%, then the dew point can coincides with the actual indoor temperature. Excessive air dryness and high humidity are harmful to human health. The most comfortable air humidity for humans lies in the range of 40 to 60 percent. A particularly adverse effect on the thermal state of a person is exerted by high humidity in combination with high temperature, more than 30 degrees, because in this case, almost all the heat released is released to the environment during the evaporation of sweat. My dear students, I want to say to you that if our time is finished, then please, once more, start our lecture. We will have uh, some break and then we will be continue our lecture. So uh, do not uh, go out from our lecture. If we have no time, uh, we will have 10 minute break and then we shall start and we'll continue our lecture. Do you understand me? Yes? Yes. Thank you. With increasing humidity, sweat does not evaporate, but flows down in drops from the surface of the skin. There is a torrential flow of sweat exhausting the body and not providing the necessary heat transfer. Insufficient air humidity is unfavorable for humans due to the intensive evaporation of moisture, 
from mucous membranes, they're drying and cracking, and then contamination with pathogenic microbes. It is considered acceptable for a person to reduce his mass by from 2 to 3 percent by evaporation of moisture, dehydration. Dehydration on 6 percent entails a viola violation of mental activity, a decrease is in visual ac acuity. Evaporation of moisture by 15 to 20 percent leads to death. Thermal regulation is also influenced by thermal infrared rays coming from the sun or other heated objects. At high ambient temperatures, heat rays contribute to overheating of the body. And at low temperatures, infrared rays helps maintain thermal balance. Air speed is an essential factor affecting the heat transfer to, of a person along with temperature and humidity. At low temperatures, a high air velocity helps cool the body. The wind displaces heated air from uh, under the clothes and increases its movement around the body. At high temperatures, moving air increases heat transfer due to uh, convection and evaporation of sweat. However, this favorable effect of the wind is observed in cases where the air temperature is below body temperature. If the air temperature exceeds body temperature, moving air instead of cooling promotes heating of the body. With the most favorable combination of temperature, humidity, air velocity and other factors, a person experiences a pleasant heat sensation. He has thermal equilibrium and the normal course of all physiological functions. Such weather conditions are called comfort. Conversely, combinations of meteorological fact factors that disrupt the body's heat regulation are called discomfort. Thermal load of the medium, the combined effect of the human body of microclimate parameters, temperature, humidity, air velocity, thermal radiation, expressed as a single dig digit in indicator in degrees. Heat load index is an empirical indicator characterizing the combined effect of the microclimate parameters, temperature, humidity, air velocity and thermal radiation on the human body. Uh, this is the end of our first part of our lecture. The first part of our lecture is over and now I'm calling a 10 minute break. In 10 minutes, please restart and we will continue our lex lecture. Thank you for attention. In 10 minutes, we <laughs> shall continue our lecture.